The city of Tulsa has been taking a very hard look at itself in the last year and has now come up with an action plan to address a startling reality. And that is, depending on where you live and what race you are, living in Tulsa is not fair or equitable. To understand why so many people of different colors and creeds pack this meeting room is to look back at what Tulsa has experienced and learned in the past couple of years. In the summer of 2016, a number of community forums on race relations with heated discussions about police bias took place. They were prompted by a number of controversial police shootings across the nation, as well as the fatal shooting of Tulsa Terrence Crutcher by a white Tulsa police officer. Around that same time, a study was released showing that the lifespans of African Americans living in North Tulsa were 11 years less than their South Tulsa counterparts. G.T. Bynum says that's when he decided to run for mayor and that he took that message of disparity to the voters during his campaign. One of the things that makes me so proud of Tulsa is that it did not matter what part of town I happened to be talking in when I would raise that statistic. People were one, horrified by it, and then two, immediately wanted to know what they could do to help. With Mayor Bynum's leadership, a racial advisory group was set up, and Tulsa applied for and received a prestigious grant from the Rockefeller Foundation's 100 Resilient Cities program. Baltimore's Otis Raleigh is the managing director of the North American division of the program. So we opened up a competition, 1,200 cities globally competed, and, and Tulsa kicked butt. With money from 100 resilient cities, Tulsa was able to conduct an in-depth study on social and justice disparities among groups of its citizens. The study is called Tulsa Equality Indicators. Bynum says the results show dramatic inequalities that are even more damning than the life expectancy differences he learned of two years ago. The Tulsa Equality Indicators report that came out a couple of months ago sets a very embarrassing baseline for our community as it relates to equity in this city. The Tulsa Equality Indicators report shows the city received an overall ranking of just 38.9 out of 100. The indicators showed disparities in 54 categories. For example, the score for race and employment was just 38 out of 100, meaning African American Tulsans are two and a half times more likely to be unemployed than white Tulsans. The score for race and officer use of force was 20 out of 100, and that whites are half as likely to experience use of force by police than blacks. The ranking on education was only 35 out of 100. The data will be used as a baseline as Tulsa implements its strategic seven-year resiliency plan, which has just been released to the public. The way that you have addressed issues of race and equity in this document, um, you did not put your head in the sand like many other cities have done. Right? You, you are stepping up and now you're going to be investing in a way that says this matters. We know where we stand today in Tulsa. We have the numbers to show us where we stand today in Tulsa. But that need not be the way that Tulsa is in the future. We can build the kind of city that we want Tulsa to be, a city where every kid has an equal shot at a great life here in our city. Some goals of Resilient Tulsa include create an inclusive future that honors all Tulsans, equip all Tulsans to overcome barriers and thrive, advance economic opportunities for all Tulsans. Specific actions to achieve those visions are spelled out in the document, which can be viewed on the City of Tulsa's website. Leading the execution of the plan is the city's chief resiliency officer, Devon Douglas. And this isn't one of those days where we say that the work has just begun, because we stand on tall shoulders. We stand on people who rose up from the trail of tears. We stand on the shoulders of people who laid bricks on, on Greenwood in Black Wall Street. We stand on the shoulders of people who rose up after the flood in the 1980s and said, this isn't good enough for our city. 